Welcome to the Fast Lane Car and welcome to our very special new Friday feature called Forza Friday. And with me is John Feeney, who is going to help us check out all sorts of Italian machinery. And John, tell me about the Ferraris and Italian cars that you've owned. Uh, well, I've had uh, three Ferraris, uh, 308, uh, two 308s, 308 GT4, 308 uh, GTB, yeah. and uh, Mondial T convertible. Really gotten into the Italian uh, aspect of things. So every Friday what we're going to do is we're going to profile and highlight Italian cars. And today we're starting with a classic, a Ferrari Dino, thanks to you and your friend David Lucy. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. GT Dino. And what year? 73. <laughs> that is what you pay the big bucks for. Well, look at this. I like these two part seat belts. That is really old school. That is. So, how long have you had this? I've had it since 1980. And you are the third owner, huh? Third owner. How did you come about this? What, now it's 23 years ago, right? 33 years. 33 years ago. Yeah, I was just, uh, I I was driving an Audi and I decided I wanted a Porsche to go with it. So yep. This isn't a Porsche. This isn't a Porsche. <laughs> oh, it sounds magnificent. Rest is here. left here. I mean, I, I'm not driving it, but it feels like it's on rails. I mean, I can just tell yeah, it's how sticks. connected it is to the road. Yeah, it's. Uh, it doesn't have enough horsepower to break loose if you're driving fast. This one to me is the first time that Ferrari did a V6. Yeah. And it was basically uh, Enzo Ferrari's son's project. So Enzo had allowed the, them to do the V6 for the first time, deviating from their V12s. I, like David, I love the look of this. This car specifically has the chairs and flares option. So you see the flared fenders, the uh, specialty seats here. And then I love the, the interior design of the steering wheel and the dash. It's fantastic. Um, I had a 308 GT4, which is a successor to this car, um, a four seat version uh, with a three liter uh, V8. So that was the next one to come and hopefully we can do a review of that one on uh, a TFL car. Why didn't they put the Ferrari badge and name on it? I think, if I'm not mistaken, the, the, the story goes that, again, this was a specialty project of Enzo's son, Dino, and uh, since it was the first six, and they had been previous to that doing, you know, their, their moniker was the V12s, uh, you know, I don't know if he knew where this project was going to lead ultimately. So, so they were hedging their bets. I think so. I hey. think so. At least that's my opinion. And that, of course, devalued the car because people wanted the Ferrari badge, uh, and it took what, 30 years for people to figure out that this is a true Ferrari. Right, and, and even, even when I owned the 308 GT4, uh, which was a Dino badged car, uh, about halfway through the production of that car, they switched and started, the dealers were installing Ferrari badges to help with the sales and, uh, and things of that nature. So yeah, it always had that little stigma to it, 
Um, but now I think everybody knows the story and the history and it's made it that much more special car. And how collectible are these now? These cars, uh, anywhere between 250, 350, upwards of $400,000 for the right one. Uh, totally restored concourse condition. How much did this cost when you first bought it? Uh, it costs about, the, the original cost on this car was probably around $14,000. And how much did you pay for it? I paid seventeen and a half. for it. And of course now you can multiply that number by a factor of at least 10 or 20. Yeah, it's, it's quite a bit. It's been a good investment. What, what makes it so usable and so much collectible? I don't have an idea. Yeah. It's just something that I like and that's why I still have it. Yeah, yeah. I've had other ones and they've gone, come and gone, so. But so have you ever thought about that? Why are the other Ferraris gone and why do you still have this one? I like the way it looks. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the proportions are And just... my wife likes the way it looks, so <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, that's for half the battle. And uh, last question. You said when we were in the car that 30 years ago you bought it for a different reason, right? Yeah, I was looking for a sports car. And today you keep it for what reason? The way it looks. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you very much. I appreciate you sharing uh, your beautiful Dino with us and enjoy it for many more years. Okay, thank you. I just drive it on the weekends. Uh, yeah. I'll take it out and I'll run it, uh, get oil temperature, water temperature, clean it out a little bit, put it back in the garage. And... Yeah, because the worst thing <clears throat> would be not to run a car. It yep. just fall apart. Yep. So, I mean, a, a, a car that's used and loved is the best kind of car. And this, this has that patina of, you know, it's a driver, right? You don't want a car that is such pristine shape that it's trailer queen. But this one looks like you can take out and not feel like you're endangering your kids' uh, college fund. <laughs> yeah, well, my kids' college fund and grandkids' college fund <laughs> are well behind me, so... Uh, Have you ever raced it? I used to run it on a track. I wouldn't call it racing, but uh, in the 80s, we would run down at the Con Continental Divide Raceway. Uh -huh. And I have an open exhaust for this, which is no mufflers. Yeah. That sounds great.